Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. These are all the movies I watched in May of 2024. I started off by watching High and Low. This was my first Kurosawa film. I meant to watch more of his, just never really got around to doing it. But this one that was quite good. It's a nice crime thriller drama type thing. Uh, I found it interesting how distinctly the three acts of this movie were. Uh, supposedly Kurosawa do does that in a lot of his films, but I thought that was really interesting. Each section had a very, very different vibe, and I liked all of them. Uh, I maybe didn't like this movie as much as other people, which I still really enjoyed it, but I don't know. I feel like crime-type uh, drama things just aren't as much of my thing. This movie also has quite a largish cast of characters. Each section kind of follows it. Uh, it it's the same narrative, but kind of switches point of views, and so I never really felt super attached to any of the characters. I was really, really invested in the plot, but the characters themselves, I was just take it or leave it with them. But other than that, this was a great film. I was thoroughly invested all the way through. The whole movie also just looks really nice. The whole thing is well put together. And so it's definitely good and worth watching. And then I watched Sherlock Jr. This was my very first silent film and I was surprised at how well I was able to adjust to it. Uh, just cause it's a very different kind of experience you'd think. But just the way it's put together, obviously this one's a more slapstick comedy uh, is directed and you know, lead star is Buster Keaton. And so it's more of just a comedy slapstick. You don't rely on dialogue too much. So obviously it being silent isn't a huge deal, but it's still just kind of crazy how well you're able to just watch it and not really even think about the fact that the characters are not even speaking. Uh, it's just well made like that, I guess. But yeah, I just had a fun time with this movie. Uh, it's crazy how timeless the comedy is in this. It got me Got me chuckling quite a few times, so it's quite good. Next, I watched Psycho, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, of course. This is obviously a really famous thriller movie, and I was really interested in that. I guess it's, like, labeled as horror, and I wasn't really sure where on the spectrum it would lie, but it is definitely more of a thriller movie. Uh, I think it's very good at doing that. It has lots of tension and suspense throughout the whole thing. Except for maybe at certain points. Like, I think the beginning part, I wasn't super into it and obviously you know it needs to build up but i still just wasn't super interested in the characters or anything that was going on really and there's some other sections where i was losing just a little bit of interest but obviously so much of this film is so great there's a reason it's so iconic and i think it definitely deserves the standing that it has it's just that in my opinion i would have maybe switched up the story structure a little bit and then i watched rope interestingly different from psycho in the sense that psycho was a big you know tension builder up to you know a murder that would take place whereas this one the murder took place right at the start and it's a lot of tension that follows that's the focus of this movie it's all filmed in real time which i think is super cool there's very minimal cuts it allows the story to just develop very organically and you learn about the characters in a very natural way and the whole thing just has a really nice build in the tension throughout it it feels like there are so many details in this very short just an hour and 20 minute runtime it's incredible how much is compact i felt like i was constantly looking at different things like oh there's that there's that these characters are saying this i was constantly intrigued and very locked in on this movie it just does an incredible job at capturing your attention and by the end i was literally squirming in my seat because it just does an incredible job with that suspense. This is a truly great thriller movie. And then I watched Vertigo. This was an interesting case because I found that the first two thirds of this movie, I wasn't super invested. The characters weren't too interesting to me, but I still was curious about what was happening next. And I still want to know how this whole thing concluded. But then that last third is like incredible. It really just kicks off. All the characters suddenly gain so much more depth. And I was like, really into what was happening. I think the first two thirds is a necessary buildup. It is kind of hard to, I wouldn't say super hard, but you know, it can be a little bit boring maybe to get through, but it is definitely worth it. It's just kind of unfortunate that so much of this movie I wasn't super into. The first chunk of this movie just feels like the necessary building blocks that Alfred was, Alfred Hitchcock was just kind of get through, just, you know, get these out of the way so I can get to the real meat and potatoes of what I really wanted to make. And because of that, it kind of leads to an incredible climax that's just built up upon pretty 
okay storytelling thus far. Overall, despite the fact that the majority of this movie I wasn't super into because of how well it concludes, I felt completely satisfied and I still think this is a great movie. Next is Hundreds of Beavers. What just a wild, hilarious, and fun movie this is. It's really surreal and completely insane and it just works to keep it really fun the whole way through. I'm really glad I watched Sherlock Jr. before I watched this movie because it really feels like an evolution of those types of movies. Like if those, if that genre continued on to the modern day, just that, you know, fun, silly slapstick type humor. And obviously this one, it brings a lot of its own personality to it. And it's more modern with the humor, obviously. And it's just a load of fun. It's really surreal, as I said before, and it almost gave me a little bit of a Wes Anderson vibe because of that surreal type nature to it. But yeah, this is just a great fun movie and thoroughly entertaining. And then the last movie I watched this month was The Birds. This was also, unfortunately, my least favorite movie that I watched this month. I don't think it's necessarily bad. I just don't think it really reached the heights that Hitchcock hit before with other movies. I think the concept itself is actually really good. Like, I think it does a great job of showing, like, how something as simple as a flock of birds can actually be really scary. But the problem with it is that any time there was a build-up intention, or where I felt like there was meant to be a build-up intention, it just didn't quite reach a climax or any big like oh, okay this is getting really intense it just kind of started and then kind of petered out and there's some instances where i understand what it was trying to doing but it still just didn't work as well as i wanted it to couple that with the fact that this movie has some unfortunately not great visual effects with the birds and everything it's it's just unfortunate that's just the way it is with these older movies i understand uh just you know, wish it wasn't that way. Overall, this is a fine enough movie. I just found myself sitting there waiting for some moment to really be a, a big moment to really, you know, get me into it, but that never really happened. And there you have it. Those are all the movies I watched this month. You can head down to the comments and tell me your thoughts on these movies. Remember to save the blobfish, and I'll see you guys next time.